Yeah, so um, the second question was, um, yeah, what core IP management principles were enabled or implemented by IMAC, and um, which also later then, of course, lead to the value appropriation regime. Um, so what they've done smartly, they have established different kinds of IP. So they have a first class of IP, which was generated yeah, exclusively by IMAC. So this is the R0, the IMAC standalone IP um, that the partners can get access to. Then there's a second class, R1, that's co-generated uh, between a partner and IMAC, uh, which also then can be later licensed to other partners. Um, and uh, to distinguish uh, this development or this kind of IP, there's a second class R1 prime, um, which is only, yeah, which is co-generated with another partner, uh, but which only has limited access. So this is not in the end um, accessible for everyone. And uh, there's even on top of that, the third category R2, which is um, generated for a specific partner uh, or I make works for a specific partner in this case. And then it is only um, owned by this partner and there's no access for other partners. Um, so in the end, it means we have different kind of categories of um, IP, which would also allow each partner to create its own mix of IP. So each partner could, depending on its needs, and then this the, um, business, of course, then talk to IMAC and, and see what kind of IP they need. So they still have a possibility of differentiation. Now we've just got a very, very brief bit on how that's appropriated by both the uh, IAPs and IMAC. So it's they've got stimulated innovation because there's sort of a lot more technology flows about a lot more access to IP than it otherwise is. The partners can access technologies through licensing. A lot of these areas of IP that Torsten was talking about, they've got open, well, not open access, but they've got cross-licensing possibilities. They can share R&D costs. Most of the generated, co-generated IP has co-ownership attached to it. And then there's this mix of a direct valorization and a safeguarding of the IP and protection, uh, but there's still a possibility for differentiation between all of the parties involved in the research agreement, What, as they can own parts of their own IP that are particularly relevant to their space that they operate in. And on top of that, uh, IMEC can also charge um, fees for joining in such an agreement or or a yearly membership, which, um, yeah, which is another road of appropriation.